Los Angeles, here's Everyday Woman. Welcome back to Everyday Woman. I'm Yolanda Mitchell Brown, and we have a great show for you today. So, ladies, I was looking, um, I was reading an article in Psychology Today, and it was talking about mothers who try to be friends with their daughters. How do you feel about that, Sunita? Well, I have a little son, and we are going to be best friends. No, <laughs> I'm a mom. Okay, I, I need to stand my ground. I, I'm not going to be best friends with my kids. Well, the problem I had with the article was that a lot of moms want to go to clubs with their daughters, and you know, I, I think that's wrong. I think that when do, where do you lo lose the line of respect for your? Parents? I think that is absolutely wrong. I don't want to put the fear of God into my child because I do want them to be able to come to me and talk to me if there's a problem. Um, so I guess to a certain level, you want to have a friendship in a way where you can talk to mom about anything, but then also there is that fine line and you're not going to see me out partying with my daughter any day. You know, there's definitely needs to be that I'm the boss. That's what I tell her. She's three years old and I already tell her that I'm the boss. <laughs> well, you should be the boss because you know? if you don't get your children under control and make them respect you at an early age, you have, your chances of them respecting you when they're older is very slim. Um, the problem I found with the article was that and it relates to today. I thought about Demi Moore and Whitney Houston and Demi Moore getting high with her daughter. Uh, Whitney Houston, her daughter's at the club with her. Now she's passed away. What kind of example is that to set? Christina. Well, I think that you need to be a mother. You can't have two daughters. You're not twins. You're a mother and a daughter. And there needs to be a distinction. Um, you can't have the mothers and daughters dressing the same and going to the same clubs and parties. That's unacceptable. I mean, you shouldn't be like a drill sergeant, but you need to have clear boundaries and, you know, there needs to be a difference between your relationship with your daughter and your relationship with just your regular girlfriends. It can't be the same. I especially think it's unacceptable when the kids are underage. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to be taking partying with my kid when she's under 18, and even when she's 18 or 19 or 20, I don't think I see myself partying with my kids. I mean, there's just a relationship there, mother-daughter, and yes, when she grows up to be a respectable adult in society that's functioning and doing well, well then, yeah, her and I, when she's much older, we'll go out and have fun and we'll, we'll bond and, and get that friendship that I think naturally develops between mother and daughter once that daughter becomes an adult, but not when they're growing up. Right. You, no, there has to be a, a difference when somebody roles. is a child, especially Especially some parents do illegal things like buying alcohol for their yeah, underage daughters and well, how they're getting know, into the clubs. Like that. yeah, that's <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yeah. But you know, I, I think the hard thing for parents at that age is, you know, so many kids are so independent and you're trying to raise them to be independent. And so, you know, there it gets to be that fine line when they're teenagers and they are asserting their adulthood, or, you know, getting to adulthood and independence. You do how not do you, take your teenager to a club. How do you club? relate to them? How do you keep track of them I, I, without being in their life? Like, I want, I, I think the problem no, people No, your parents need to be in your life. You, they, you need to be reading your kid's journal. You need to be going through their, um, their Facebook their pages. Their Facebook yeah. page, their cell phone. You know what? If, if There's if no if privacy if you live in my house. That, I wouldn't be writing a journal. I wouldn't be yep. on Facebook. And that's, it kind of inhibits you because you're not going to be putting things out so there if you think someone's going to be reading through your well, things. Well, from the beginning, you need to have an open relationship with your, with your child where it's not like we're just buddies and pals, but it's, you know, you can come to me, you can talk to me, and they're not going to be, you know, hiding things in their journal and their Facebook because they'll be comfortable to come to you. But, and that's, but that's what I was saying. You don't want to put that fear into exactly. your child, but your child should have a level mm -hmm. of respect, and I, I just absolutely am against parents who go out partying with their kids, and I, I know there's parents who use excuses like, oh, I want my kids to be able to party here at home where it's safe, and I'll, I'll provide the alcohol on their teenagers. Instead, and I it don't should agree. be, you're not partying agree. at all. Yeah, you're not partying at home, you're not either. partying in exactly. But here's the fine line. Let's say it's, take it out of a club situation where we can all agree there's no reason for parents to go to a club with their kids. But, you know, my par my family, we had family parties, and at those family parties, there's different. alcohol, and, you know. But people tend and to behave a little bit better at family parties, and even, although they drink, <laughs> they do behave a little bit better. I was just going to say, you're going to go to my family party. Okay. There's a difference between a family party and like, hey, you can invite all your little friends and boyfriends and they can sleep over and we can just all have all kinds of weird fun together. I mean, some parents, like you've seen like on Jerry Springer, the mother's dating the daughter's boyfriend. And I mean, I think well, things yeah. like that Christina, really I think that some of the mothers are probably just lonely and they're looking for a best friend. And we also have one more question in this open dialogue. What is too sexy for toddlers? I personally have a problem with the new wrap dresses that Gap is making for toddlers. I think for me, when I put on a wrap dress, it's sexiness because it, you know, it, it enhances my breasts, it makes my butt pop out. I don't think a two-year-old, four-year-old should be wearing a wrap dress. 
I have a problem with that. Sunita, do you have a problem with that? I never thought of a wrap dress as, as being too sexy. Oh. Actually, I think of it as a, because I have wrap dresses I wear for business occasions. My problem with those. And that's why you're getting so far in your business. Because you have all this <laughs> Oh, my. Oh, no, I do not concentrate on that to get ahead. In you're not background. concentrating on it, but the men are concentrating on you. Well, what I have a problem with those dresses and, and getting kids clothing that is so expensive and having them be little mini-me's, you know, I mean, I, I think you're blurring the lines. Kids need to be able to be 60, kids. Like 60, 68 dollars. Yeah, that's I mean, way. That would be I my see biggest problem wrong with that. that. Like, if I had like a lot of money, I would have no problem spending a whole lot of money on buying kids' clothes. Where does it stop? Because uh, you know, you're spending that kind of money uh, on your kids when they're that young. You know, they just grow up entitled to feel like you just have to shower me with money. And finally, I get to have I mean, that I said something I can agree with. It, <laughs> what? Okay, no finally. Here we well, go. We, the problem is the kids. Something. They outgrow their stuff so quickly. But then you can so that, give you know, it to other kids. You I know, because if the clothes are really well made, no, and, you if they're know, well made and well washed, and then they can be hand me downs and they can I last for a long we, time. I think we're opening the door for designers this, this, um, to get on parents who like to buy anything exactly. and everything for their children. You know, this is a great topic, great open dialogue. We have to move on. Um, stay with us. We'll be right back with more real conversation with Every Way Woman. Here's Every Way Woman. Welcome back to Real Conversation with Every Way Woman. Ladies, I want to talk about this because it's really bothered me the last time we um, shot here. More children are being born to single mothers. I have a problem with that. I'm not going to even talk to you. <laughs> Michelle, so how do you feel saying. about the birth rate going up with so many women not being married right now? Um, I, you know, I'm not totally against it. I believe in the family unit. I do think every child, their the best situation is to have a mother and a father within the home. However, some people just don't, you know, I'd rather have a functioning, happy, healthy, single mom than have a mom who's married to a guy who beats her, but they're staying together for the sake of the kids. Absolutely. So, you know, it just, okay, wait, I think so it, it just depends to this, on the situation. According to this study, majority of the mothers who were under 25, okay, you have not, unless you're some superstar, rock star, actress or something, uh, and you're famous, you don't have the money, you don't have that mm -hmm. education yet to provide for that child. And it becomes a society problem. And I have a problem that people think it's okay to just have kids just because it's okay. It's not okay. Sunita, I have a problem with single parents, especially mothers always talking about, I'm a single mom. I really don't care that you're a single mom. You chose to be a single mom. You don't mom, care about and I have no sympathy there are for you. I don't think all moms chose to, to be a single, single mom. mom. I'm yeah. not talking about the divorced mothers. I'm okay. not talking about there, the out of that's, that's in those ratings. First time, is everyone makes a mistake. Even the second time. But if you got six kids and you sitting there telling me, oh, I'm a single mom and I can't get this, and I can't, that's not my fault. Well, there's a I difference. There there a that's baby. somebody who's abusing the system. Yeah. That, that's totally and that's different. That's not the yeah. system is working for them. That is because not all the women The majority of single moms ain't like, the welfare recipients with 10 kids. I don't think that's the majority of the single moms. I don't think that's representative that's of the average single day mom that you're going to meet. The average single mom is going to have maybe one or two kids and, you know, what else was she supposed to do? Have an abortion? I mean, that's not something I personally don't, agree don't with. Don't have kids so, before you get married. You know, I just how I truly feel. You know, different it things happen to different happens. people, It becomes you know? society prop. I said one or two, but when you have well, three... That's exactly who she's talking about. When you about, have three and four, you, and I see it all the time. You say that, but you know what? Those are anecdotal evidence. You see one no, person, so you no, think the whole system no, is yeah, I don't think filled it represents with, everybody. with six no. kids. I six volunteer kids. for foster care and the homeless shelter. And all those, you got these kids that displaced. You got kids in this part of the city and the other part of the city or the state. And the mom is still out there making more babies and the daddies cannot be found. And society has made being a single parent like a catchphrase. And everybody but goes, that, now, what are we going to do? Should we become like people. China but and say people can only have one kid? You know what? Yes. Well, okay. I don't want to live in China. China. I live in the United States of America. Go to China. <laughs> Why should I have to take care of people going out having a bunch of kids. Why do I have to help pay for after school programs? Why do I have to pay for Why do kids? I pay for, for oil companies getting subsidies? We're, we're not mean, talking you know, about oil companies. I'm just get, saying. You know what? They we are pay a, product, for a, lot of a productive part of society. Well, but here is the thing. There are I many don't. single moms who are part of productive I'm not saying they're not, too. but, but why then do we I have, have the, to feel sorry for them we every have, time they we get don't, on TV? We don't. You don't have to feel sorry Stop for them. Stop watching TV. Except right. for our show. <laughs> for 
<laughs> Nobody controls your feelings. You they're can feel however you want news. about it, but the government shouldn't control what people do or don't oh do. Oh my God, they're always on the news. And they're yes, always, and the news and, always gives the positive you know stories, they get, right? They get ahead of stuff. I know people who need stuff, like um, they can't get it because, oh, I'm sorry, you don't have any kids, you know. So I have friends who've been, um, who are married. Like my sister, for example, when my niece was able to go to um, preschool, she was turned down. You know why she was turned down? Oh, sorry, you come from a two-parent household. Sorry, you're not a special but need case. Sorry, you can read and write. She has So my options. sister is getting penalized. No, she has more That she's paying into the tax system. Her child can't go to the public school, she so now she has options. to pay to pay for her. Come on. So the single parent who don't teach their child how to read and write, my sister's being punished for now, that. But if a single a parent needs more help things. and they need more assistance, don't have the a baby. why shouldn't they get no, that help they, they need? They don't have a baby. But then what's going to happen to those children as they grow up? They need that extra assistance, so there's no That's reason the why the schools That's, can't you know give those kids you preference if they need Life is tough. Well, I don't want to live in China. I know that for sure. We're not living in China, but I'm kind of sick of you telling me that you don't have a problem with the single mom with the six kids constantly and having more. I don't want fraud. But think about this, system. Yolanda, if those six kids don't get that preference to go to that school and get that extra help, then they may grow up to be who knows what. So we need to help those kids so that cycle can be don't broken and they don't just continue to have six kids. Okay, but they're already, here. They're already here now. Now it's what do we do? It's not the kids' fault. It's, I, it's exactly. Exactly. So not we should start punishing the help. father. We need to punish the mother and well, the father. But you're not talking about that. You're talking about punishing but the kids. But what kind of no, punishment I didn't say, I would you do? If you have more than five kids, you go to jail, the jails are already too full. They move ahead of the line before other kids do. Know that. Uh, you yes, do they not. do. I don't know think that, that goes for our host, situation. One of our hosts, her child was just recently turned down for daycare because she comes from a two, the child comes from a two parent household. But there are other daycares out there for her, right? Now she has to pay. She pays taxes. Her and her husband well, pay taxes. Everybody has to pay for daycare. Exactly. So well, you're not covered by no, the public school no, system until no, you get to no. kindergarten. Well, whatever grade it was, and, kindergarten, whatever and grade. And single parents don't oh, have the option of I having the other care. parents you know, stay with the kids. Sunita, you know, Sunita, we're have limited So, I mean, that kind of equalizes things I because if somebody doesn't have both parents, but then they get more help. So, why do I have to continue to pay for all these babies? We don't want to. China. <laughs> Ladies, I know. I don't, I don't want to live in China, although the clothing should be kind of cheap, right? Okay, so don't go away. We'll be right back with Two Minute Blast here at Every Way Woman. <laughs> Here's Every Way Woman. Welcome back to Two Minute Blast. Ladies, right to the point. Would you want your friend to tell you if your husband was cheating on you? Hell yes. Yes, <laughs> yes That's important I would. information. The women who don't want to know are the ones who suspect their husband's cheating and they just don't want, they, they know it and they don't want to hear about it. Okay. They, they look the denial. other way. Why? You, uh, I want to know if my husband's cheating. I would be furious if my like one of my best girlfriends knew my husband was cheating and didn't tell me because that's that's friendship loyalty we right the only know. reason why she wouldn't tell you is if she's the one cheating with exactly. him exactly <laughs> that's what i was just about to say i was waiting for that i mean how would she know that he's cheating i mean well you could see someone doing something you, she could know the other woman but he's maybe not she a good saw cheater him then. somewhere exactly. he's Oh, well, come on. A lot of men are kinda, Everyone gets I don't caught. know. You have to wonder about her there. motives. Like, caught, yeah. you know, why, why is she telling me this? Okay. Is it because she's involved somehow? But if you know she's not, then a good friend would give the information. If she just happened to see something, Now, as she ladies, tell. you know you're lying. Because you know how it is when a woman comes you to you and tells you something about your man, you don't believe it. No. Because she tells you in the beginning, before you get married, don't marry him, he ain't no good, and you do not listen. So do you? Well, that's I a don't, different. That's, so I don't think you will actually would believe her if she came. I to would believe because you know what? I feel that I surround myself with good a good core mm -hmm. group of women that I trust and that I have good relationships with. So I think if they told me, I would believe them. Here's every way woman. Thanks for staying with us. We are back with our back to basics segment. So I read an article about parents who smoke pot. I think it's wrong to smoke to do drugs in general. What do you think, Michelle? Um. I don't, I'm not necessarily against pot smoking. I don't smoke pot, so don't think that that's why. <laughs> I'm not a pothead. But I am against smoking pot in front of your kids. I mean, if, if an adult wants to do it on their own, safely in their own home, away from the kids, the kids aren't home, I don't have a problem as long as it's not like this everyday habit, but I really don't have a problem with pot smoking. Okay, you know, it's Christine, interesting because, like, I mean, I've never even tried it myself, but I know here in the state of California it's now legal. People can go get a prescription from their doctor, and it's not like this criminal activity. So, I mean, it's not illegal to do it, but 
I, I do think it's inappropriate to be smoking pot in front of your kids. Well, it's the same thing as alcohol. I mean, I was reading an article on this, and they were talking about, well, no one thinks twice about having a drink in front of your kids or getting tipsy even. And I was like, that doesn't make but any one sense. Of the Just because it's legal there's like, has nothing to do with it. They can't get a contact high off of you drinking. But, like, if you're smoking weed, you know, mm -hmm. You so know, it's basically I don't, that's do why, as yeah, I say, I not as I but, do. But the main thing is, how are you going to be responsible for these kids when you're when you're like parting it up? You know, when you're I, hanging I, out with I them agree and with Sunita them. because what? I do. <laughs> Stop I, love you, huh? I know. <laughs> I do. I agree with Sunita. I don't think you should be. I think you should set an example. You should set an example early on. Maybe when they get older, around 10 and 12, you could probably have a drink in front of your kid. But I think you really need to set an example. Mm -hmm. I have a problem with pot smoking anyway because, you know, I hear all this, oh, it's not bad, it's cocaine or heroin. It doesn't matter. You're doing drugs. And people, as Natasha would say, marijuana makes you lazy. It takes away all your uh, ambition in life. And mm -hmm. it smells, too, and it stinks. It does stink. And for me, <laughs> as a woman, why would I want to smell like that? I want, I want to smell like flowers and sweet. I want to stink. And what man want to kiss <laughs> a woman do. with stinky breath? <laughs> but the problem is, is that parents think it's okay to do anything nowadays as long as their kids don't, don't find out. Well, kids know. But the kids know is, more than you imagine. What I want to know, though, is do you have that same passion against alcohol? Because what I don't understand is people get so worked up about marijuana, it's, it's terrible, blah, blah, I do. But alcohol is okay. No, alcohol it's not okay. abuse is, is, is such a huge problem in this country. Well, I don't drink. And it's because I've seen, I saw so much around me as a child growing up, it made me immune to it. I don't drink. I get so sick and tired of people coming to work or they're like, oh, my God, I got so drunk. I got so <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, that's I mean, disgusting. I think alcohol is great in moderation. If you have a glass or two of wine, that's fine. But if you're getting sloppy drunk, and then you go to work and you brag about it, that's unprofessional. But people do it in front of their kids. And not only do they do that, they don't realize what they're, they, a lot of times if you are into drugs or drinking alcohol heavily, it le leads to abuse in the family. Mm -hmm. And it really just messes a child up. Well, the abuse thing is definitely the issue here, though. But the thing that I don't understand is that people are like, oh, alcohol's okay, but marijuana, oh my God, yeah, that's so terrible. But there is yeah, a I difference, though. It's, it's not the same. They're not the same, but I'm not going to be so What's much against... Well, I mean, like I said earlier, you can get a contact high if I'm smoking weed and you're standing yeah, next to me. But, but if I'm drinking and you're standing next to me, that's not going to affect you I in the just, same way. I don't have anything against parents who may have... A little occasional That's pot true, smoking session Why are you together. Looking at me the crazy? kids are at grandma and grandpa's house for the whole night. Exactly. Parents go to the backyard and say, let's smoke a little weed together. And it's a once in a while thing. It's not an everyday thing. It's just, I don't have a problem with it. I have smoked pot, not in my adult life. I did it when She's I was like. She's not running for politics. I'm not running for politics. <laughs> I'm not pro pot, whatever. I'm saying I've done it when I was like 17. I've tried it. I thought it was disgusting. I got really hungry. I you thought, man, if you eat a lot, you're gonna get fat. Who? Do, why do people do this? But my thing is that if you are a parent, you don't do it around your kids. It's not an everyday thing. It's once in a while. Your kids are gone for the day or night. You're out in your backyard. I just don't have it. I don't have an issue with it. So to me, it's like having a glass of wine. Exactly. You're not gonna get in the car, and it's not a habit. Exactly. You're not doing it in front of your kids. Okay, you're so an adult, you don't have a problem with that. You do it occasionally. No, so I you don't come do it home, occasionally. I'm just saying your, your for people year old who do. Daughter, son, say, oh, mom, I just do it occasionally. No, I, I just said that we do not do it in front of our kids. I don't They're not just, doing it in no, front no, of you, but you but find I out don't, about it. But they're, first of all, they're not 18. You just said 10. If they told me, mom, I drink, so I drink a glass of wine occasionally, I'd be pissed. Hey, no, and they're telling me anything about you. I don't have any kids. Get into your little drawer and find your little pipe or whatever, how you roll it up, your little marijuana no, I, smoking and stuff. Like, that's what I, 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 stop saying New York. I don't have a little pipe at home. Let me clarify, I do not smoke pie. I said I tried it when I was a kid. But I know people who no pot okay. and I just you know it, like I said if it's somewhere where they can't find it, it's locked away it's a, an occasional rare thing once in a while like a glass of wine not in front of the kids they're out grandma's for the night I don't have a problem there with that I'm just being that, honest okay so you don't have a problem with it and but you find out no. someone you know your 17 year old niece or whatever is doing it what would you tell them? if my 17 year old niece was doing it mm -hmm. I've talked to my niece about mm -hmm. it actually she's 14 uh, you know what? This is what I tell her from a woman's point of view. I say, it's disgusting. Mm -hmm. And I, I talked to my niece about it. I said, I tried it when I was a teenager. First of all, it was gross. I did it two times. The first time, I'm like, oh, I didn't feel anything. The second time I tried it, I'm like, I'm just hungry and feel tired. I don't, and I told her, I didn't get it. You know, pot, they say, it makes you break out into acne. It makes you hungry, so what do you do? You want to eat? So I just tell like my it, niece, you know? honestly, 
Exactly. So, I, well, I know. That. Some people. So I had you a, can't just say, oh, it, it's a terrible thing because they're watching their friends and they're thinking, well, no. Yeah, I'm friends totally are like personally. It. it breaks well, up relationships, Well, I mean, I think too. I would tell a young girl if I was talking to her to not do it because you always want to be in your right mind. Exactly. Somebody may take advantage of you. You don't know because you're getting high. But I would say the same thing about alcohol, though. Exactly. I would say the same thing about alcohol. The same thing I would tell my niece about alcohol or about pot, you know, I, it made me feel lazy and like you're not totally there. I would say the same okay. thing about alcohol. Michelle, exactly. I believe you, but so. we're going to wrap this up. You know, what you did in your teenage years and you're not going to hold up against you. It was only two times. Okay, okay. And she didn't inhale. Ladies, ladies, we'll, we'll talk about this during the break. Coming up next is Michelle Rivera with Mommyhood to Hollywood and all the hot stuff in Hollywood. Here's Every Way Woman. Back, our next guest is Michelle Rivera. Welcome back, Michelle. Thank you. <laughs> so what's going on in Hollywood? Okay, so of course all the buzz is around Snooki right now. We all love Snooki, right? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Snooki, I know. Okay. Um, but okay, so apparently recently she said that she was not pregnant. That's the rumor that Snooki's pregnant. She denied it. But it's pretty much become, it hasn't been confirmed, but I think that she is about three months along pregnant at this point. Mm -hmm. And she's keeping it a secret. And apparently the rumor is, is that she's inked a deal with Us Weekly to announce her pregnancy. Oh, Yolanda's shaking her head. I have <laughs> such a problem with these celebrities with inking these deals. You got Blue Ivy, Gray Ivy, what's her name? With the trademark right. and all this stuff. <laughs> really? Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, she's also shooting a spinoff show right now with Jay Wow, and apparently- with who? Jay Wow. come on. Jay, Hello. her partner in crime on Jersey Shore, Jay Wow. We do not have Jay a fan. Jay Wow. <laughs> you know, the I do not well. waste my time. <laughs> You know that. Come on now. Well, they're they're doing their spinoff, and apparently this is. I think I don't know if it's gonna be part of the storyline, but their mm -hmm. relationships are very key, and it's supposed to be about them becoming more responsible women going into adulthood. Well, so they're so, not gonna have a show. Well, they become more responsible. Yeah. Well, if Snooki's gonna become a mom, she better become more responsible. Well, That's all I have to say. And apparently, people say she's taking her pregnancy really seriously, and she, and she wants to be a, a good mom. So we'll see. We'll see. Right. Yeah, we're okay. Wish Snooki well. We should, okay, for the next? baby's sake, yeah. we sure do. And who's she having the baby with? Her boyfriend. I can't, you know, I can't even say his name. It's like another Giovanni Hollywood celebrity or, yeah. having a baby out of wedlock. Yes. Go ahead. At least she has a boyfriend. She's in a steady relationship. Yeah. Now we'll talk about a married couple. I'm sure you'll enjoy mm -hmm. this one. Ben Affleck and Jennifer Garner. Yeah. Yeah. My oh. husband is such a big Ben Affleck. Man. I see your face you lighting up. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> I've never I see heard of that. Lighting you up. Like, I, knew, I knew you liked them <laughs> mm -hmm. just by your expression. Well, they're they married. Just, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, they just gave birth on February 27th to their first son. You know, they mm -hmm. have two daughters already. Samuel Garner Affleck. I think that and name's so cute. Name. I, was <laughs> just, I was just going to say that. He has a normal name, mm -hmm. so it's really cute. Um, Boring, yeah. Now, Ben shared the news on his Facebook page. I saw Did that. Did you see that? Yes, yeah. I saw that. He shared the news. And, but, you know, earlier in the year, he actually admitted to Jay Leno that he wasn't sure if he, if he wanted a boy. Um, he had, they hadn't said what they were having, but they just kind of said, oh, what do you have a boy? Because mm -hmm. you have two yeah, girls. Yeah, I saw that. He said he was yeah. like, used to the girls, and he liked yeah. having all the women. Well, this was, this was his quote. He said, well, we have girls. He says, we know how to do girls. We, <laughs> my girls love me. I'm the big guy in the house, so now I'm not so sure. That's what he said about Aww, having a boy. But you know he's got to be ecstatic now that his yeah. son's here, that he has a I really want boy. this couple to stay together. Yeah, I, yeah. I like them, yeah. too. they seem real, and yeah. they seem like they do normal things. And, you know, I just get, I, I'm not a huge Ben Affleck fan. I like him with it. You know, Goodwill Hunting. Anytime he does anything with Matt Damon, I'm a fan. Oh, I cannot but stand Matt whole, Damon. Go ahead. Whole, <laughs> okay. Yeah, he's a happily married uh, husband as well with yeah, the, with the kids. little kids. Yes. But you know what? I just give him so much credit for the turnaround he's made. You know, with that whole J Lo thing that happened, and now he's you know he just went a whole different direction, and I'm happy well, for him. He went I from think, one Jennifer to another. Yeah, but I think yeah. with J Lo, he probably didn't feel like he could be himself. He was kind of the glammed up Ben Affleck, yeah. and really, I think he's just a down earth kind of guy and mm -hmm. Jennifer Garner's a better fit for him yeah. in that mm -hmm. way. So, Now the next um, big pregnancy announcement was Uma Thurman who's pregnant with her third child with I guess some off again on again boyfriend. I didn't even check out who this guy is. But, <laughs> no, the all um, wedlock. Yeah, birth and yeah, Hollywood. yeah. <laughs> So she well, made she her tried the in wedlock with, birth, and yeah, that she didn't work out so She well. was married with to Ethan right. Hawke for a long time. They had two kids, and that didn't work. And I, I'm not 100% against out of wedlock marriages if it's if the couples are in a good relationship and it's healthy, and they're able to pay for their kids. Yolanda, <laughs> not some single mom trying to take advantage of the system. I, didn't say a word. <laughs> I don't know about Uma. I don't trust it all. <laughs> 
Anyhow, she just, you know, premiered her baby bump in New York City. I am happy, though, that, you know, that she's older and she's having a baby. And that's really nice that she's yeah. happy about it. But so. I'm not happy that she's in this on and off, on, uh, you know, on Again, and on. Again, so that's on and off for the kids. Because you yeah. don't know. You know, What's is this guy happen? really going to be sticking around? And uh, I'm a little hesitant about that. So. I don't know much but about they don't care. Just it's just all about, about them. them. Just like the single yeah. mothers, it's all about them. But go ahead. Um, <laughs> and just so you know, look out for Uma. She's going to be in five episodes of NBC Smash, if anybody's caught that. Ooh, I would have up. never guessed yeah, that. Yep. Yeah. So you're like, who? You haven't heard of Smash? I have not heard that show. And the only reason I'm kind of curious is just because all of the people involved. I mean, you have Angelica I get Houston all my celebrity news from you. <laughs> <laughs> just, okay, you. Smash, check it out. I do. I just watch your Monday Facebook nice. page. I just go to Mommy Hood to Hollywood. <laughs> And I get all my That's celebrity news. That's the way news. to do it. Yes, Why would you go anywhere else? Exactly. Now, I wanted to switch gears a little bit to a, I know we talked about moms, so celebrity moms, but to a child or a daughter. Um, Bobby Christina is celebrating her 19th birthday mm -hmm. this weekend. So obviously this is going to be a tough one with Whitney Houston being gone. So I just was kind of wondering what you guys all thought about that. Do you think she should be sticking close to her family during this birthday? Do you, I think you, personally, first of all, I kind of feel sorry for her. I thought about this for a second. This is a child who has basically, we don't know her education. We don't know if she have any skills. She's, her mom She's has done singer. everything for her, you know, and I feel bad for her a little bit in that sense. I think she needs to be with her father. You know, her father has been uh, sober for six years. I have nothing against um, Bobby Brown. Mm -hmm. um, I think that Whitney Houston, who I love to death, made that decision to continue the life that she did. That's sad, but Bobby Christina needs to be with her father because he's been sober, he's been through all that, and he needs to help her. But what about all of the stuff that she witnessed while they were together? I mean, she's talked about abuse. I mean, is that a good relationship to go to someone who was abusive to your mother? Also, they you said that very strongly. They said that when Whitney and Bobby Brown broke up, Bobby Brown wasn't really around. All that often for Bobby and I think Christina. He has like twenty other kids. Yeah, yeah. I think but, he I mean, wasn't really an active you know, dad that's the in her only life. She like has left. I think but she needs has, like needs but a professional person to mm -hmm. help her get through this. She has strong people in her life. She has her grandmother. She has you know godparents. And I, all I think those she people. should be yeah with whoever she's close. Okay, with. Okay, ladies, you, we're gonna talk more about Bobby Christina. I'm sure there's gonna be more Bobby Christina in the news. Um, Thank you for joining us today here at Every Way Woman. I'd like to thank Michelle Rivera for sitting in with us with all her mommyhood to Hollywood gossip. And we'll see you next time. This has been an Everyway Woman production.